All right, pre-show shenanigans. Uh, went to the Dodger game on Sunday. Uh, first things first, we gotta start off with this. The Dodgers have not won the last game of a series since the All-Star break. They've also lost ten straight games on Sunday this year. Uh, I don't know why, but my brother and I thought to ourselves, you know what? If there's going to be a Sunday they break the curse or a time they break the last game losing curse, it's going to be when we go because we break curses. That's what we do out here. Incorrect. The only curse getting broken was my win streak record. Well, not a curse, but the only streak getting broken was my win streak record. Yeah, your curse did not get broken. Let's clarify that. The curse was not broken. No, no, the curse continued. Uh, So, uh, Dodgers got spanked. Uh, I believe it was 7-0 in the third inning. 7-0 in the third inning. Maybe in the fourth inning. Uh, This was versus the Reds, right? This was was the Reds game? Yeah, Cincinnati Reds. Ellie De La Cruz uh, was phenomenal. Was Grove pitching that day? Yeah, Michael Grove. Yeah. Uh, feeling West should have known better. Finest. Yeah, no, no, we, we should have known better. The, known the better. tickets were ridiculously cheap. It was almost as if Dodgers were telling us, we know this is an L, that's why they're so cheap. Uh, but uh, if there's any positive, I didn't get sunburned like last time. Uh, it was a night game. No, 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 day game, 1 p.m. Oh, it was a day game. We were sitting like in the perfect shade though, even though I also literally had... If you were going to describe like coats of painting, I had three coats of sunscreen on. So like I have the sunscreen. You've got the lifeguard white nose of sunscreen applied. Pretty much. Uh, But we were sitting in the shade. It didn't matter anyway, but it didn't get sunburned. But shit, we got smoked. Uh, So like I would have taken on the sunburn. (laughs) I would have taken it on if it meant just anything else other than I think 9-0 final score miguel wrote believe so at the end my brother and i were like shit this is gonna it's be a sight. like he's electric his pitching debut like if we're gonna see something magnificent at least have it be this we get, uh, yeah yeah but yeah uh jd martinez getting hurt will smith got uh hit on the elbow he he's gonna play tomorrow so but let's that was let's essentially ex- two star players getting hurt let's explain appearance. let's explain your curse Let's explain your curse history, our curse history, yeah, so the, and what the, happens. The, the injury slash um, suspension slash career ending uh, history of our, the recent game. Well, the so, career ending is only me and you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Together. Well, like last time we were together, Dustin May out for the year. Not time a before look. that. Back we to had Dr. Elitrosh. Uh, he we goes. also had Mike. Yeah, what was the time before that? What was the time? What was the time before, before that? that? Trevor Bauer last. MLB there was one. Started. There was one guy before that as well. Maybe I don't exactly so remember. But Trevor Bauer, we wish you well. Saw his last MLB start against the Giants. Big time dub. Not gonna lie. Uh, but yeah, we saw his last start. Uh, my track record isn't great when it comes to guys having career threatening moments in their last time with me watching it's not a good track record something i should aspire to fix but right now it's it's not looking great jd martinez we hope he can get back soon uh i i heard he got mris yesterday after the game did not hear any reports of the mris afterwards so i don't know um how they came back uh Hopefully, they wouldn't be able to tell you it was negative. If if they were negative, maybe maybe they're <laughs> waiting until you. today to announce their positive. But yeah. look, let's let's just say this is the main thing. Whenever Grant Oscar Hernandez, that that might be the thing we do with JD. Whenever Houston, Grant so. goes to a game, we'll whenever Grant goes to a game, somebody gets hurt. That's the general. Somebody gets hurt. That's oh, the oh, issue. the win streak record snapped too. Oh, Grant damn. had had a nice a, a literally like nice, a five year record five undefeated. Year streak of games when he in attendance of at dodger stadium good looking good looking number obviously uh that that streak was snapped um also in part of his his curse had probably reason to do with that being snapped uh so i am now the only remaining one of us with a undefeated record at dodger stadium um however the issue is the undefeated record does come with uh a career threatening penalty for whichever pitcher is currently pitching for the Dodgers. So yeah, you will yeah, never find a slight concern when it comes Grant to Grant and I will never be at a game where Clayton Kershaw or that, that too. Bobby I mean, Miller I just is don't starting. I think I'm going to 
watch a Dodger game live for the rest of the year. You know, I'm I'm gonna do my part. I'm gonna do my part. All right, I'm gonna do what I can to help this organization. Well, let's let's also clarify if ourselves. if Michael Grove is pitching again, you and I will be at the stadium. Yeah, I mean, shit, if, it should if, have been Michael, if anyone, it should have if, been Grove. If, if Noah, if, if Noah Syndergaard was was pitching, you and I would be at the stadium together. Yeah, for the well, game. Noah Syndergaard uh, gone now, off our hands now. So you know that's that's one that ever Michael Grove Everett's biggest personal problem is now gone. So <laughs> congratulations, that's your nightmare gone. My nightmare yeah. is still on the team. Austin Barnes, he's still that <sighs> leech, that you parasite, see? just he... sucking the life out of this franchise every day. Can we, I think we the Dodgers that, like... are seven or uh, four and seventeen in their last twenty-one games. So can we can we alter game. like can we can we have some sort of ritualistic sacrifice where we alter our curse? Yeah, I'll call to being... up a voodoo witch. I'll, I I know. The I mean, contact. I'm in New Orleans. It's not that hard for me. It's got. They have to be available somewhere down here. Uh, yeah, there's definitely a, at least at least somewhere. a handful of 24 seven voodoo witches. Mm, right. An hour out. It's like clinics. Right. You know, you got to go in and get fixed up. So uh, can we can we alter it? Do some ritualistic sacrifice where we no longer curse the starting pitchers, but we to curse the catchers. All well, we got to do is get awesome. Well, Marcus. we got to be careful. Careful. We can't let any of that any of that karma rub off on will smith okay no that's what i'm saying we only go you only go to austin barnes games if we can force it and focus it to austin barnes yes but to the it's only when we're it's 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 only when we're present at the games yeah but right now it's any pitchers up for grabs i'm well yeah if it's any pitcher rather have it be that than any catcher it's 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 any pitchers up for grabs if we're at the game together so theoretically we hold Picture I mean, careers we have in our hands because we we can end the careers that we don't like Lance single handedly Lance Lynn I'm coming for that ass if you don't do well so <laughs> all all it, well no we we plur like it has to be us together otherwise well it I mean exist. I have this curse on my own you uh, have you have the general player curse the position well, well player that's curse. just happened one time. You I mean, and I, I have... still have the pitcher curse. So no, I, no, next no, no, no. The pitcher curse is it's, it's me and you together. Every time we've been there together is when the pitchers got hurt. Well, I mean, two for two record. Don't get me wrong. Three but... for three record. I don't remember who the middle guy was, but uh, they were. I'm they not also... sure if our well, well, the one time we went to that game in Minnesota, the Dodgers were not playing. I just no, 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 no. So it's not, it's not that. This is it. only a Dodger stadium. We went, we've gone to three games. There was the game. It was the one with me, Did you, we? and the unnamed intern, where the we got blown the last second by uh, our favorite closer of them all. Um, I don't even remember his name, but oh, last year. Oh, oh, big uh, Craig Kimbrell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, good yes. Good times, good times. Uh, I, I swear that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't remember. Maybe, maybe Craig Kimbrell uh, got his like soul sucked out of him. I think he's a little ginger, so that joke counts for a little bit. But yeah, uh, in terms of that, yeah, Dodger Day not going to plan. I, I'm retired for the year. I'm done. Uh, future, future Dodger appearances up for debate. We'll see exactly what happens. But, but yeah. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Waterboy Podcast. Today is episode 139. Jonathan Taylor and Jim Ursay have added some juicy, juicy drama to the running back controversy. Shout out Aaron Rodgers for being a good guy and sticking up for Nathaniel Hackett from the mean bully Sean Payton. The MLB trade deadline is today when this episode is being released. And uh, I got some college football recruiting updates. Everett has some more NFL surprising keeps and cuts and some more NFL news that Everett's going to pull out of his ass. We can't wait to find out what that is today, but yeah. Okay. Starting off, we'll stay in season. Okay. It's it's, this is like the last week where we are not fully into NFL swing of things. Like this is the last week where MLB, you get some shine with the trade deadline. So we're going to let the MLB go first. And reality, we let the we save the best for last. So in a way, this is a diss to the MLB. But MLB is going first. Uh, trade deadline news. So some things, things went down from last time we conversed. So starting things off, like immediately after we recorded, Lucas Giolito became a Los Angeles... Do- Angel, not the Dodgers, went to the Angels, the other team in LA, Anaheim, technically not LA, but Lucas Giolito is an Angel, Randall Grichik and CJ Crone, the Crone Zone, are also going to They've Anaheim. been really stocking so up. Angels, I'll give them props. I like this is one thing I was thinking about, okay? 
Uh, we're all talking about Shohei Otani. No one's talking about Mike Trout. Uh, from Mike Trout's perspective, if you have Otani, the best player in baseball, if not Mike Trout, then Shohei Otani. So you have the two best players in baseball. If you weren't going to go all in for it, at least the just one year, because every other year they sell and give up. But just this one time, if you weren't going to go in on it, and I was Mike Trout, I would just retire next year. I'm done with this shit. All right. If they didn't try this year, when will we try? Never. You wouldn't That's go to another answer. team? Mike Trout? No, I just hang up, hang up the cleats. We're done here. We're done. I'm, I'm out. Peace out. I'm <laughs> you clearly don't need me. I don't need you anymore. So I, I'm obviously kidding. But like, actually, though, from the Mike Trout morale so what, perspective, one thing, as a one human thing, being, let's help him out. Let's, let's do this for Mike, guys. One so, thing that I uh, I just thought about, by the way, if you're the angel, look, so like, we can all recognize to this point the Angels have done a lot to overhaul their roster, the pitching core, the hitting CJ Crone specifically, phenomenal hitter, right? Yeah, I mean CJ Crone will definitely make up for. I think they're paying like twenty five a year to Rendon to be hurt, so that'll fill yeah. that gap. So like, pretend that money's just going. To Don't go. worry, Ward Ward is hurt now too. Um, yeah, no, no, great things happening over in Am- uh, Anaheim. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Am- but uh, yeah. I'm I don't know what the contract situation is on most of these guys they're now trading for, but let's assume that they're more than one year, at least until you look this up. Uh, probably all going to be like last year deals, but. Maybe, but let's maybe. just let's just say hypothetically, right? Or they can resign. They got money to resign. I feel like this also, even if they don't win in the playoffs, this also is kind of a last ditch attempt to get Shohei to stay. Be like, hey, look, we're finally overhauling the roster. We're trying to support you. We're getting the pitching staff for you. We're getting hitters for you. So you're not doing literally everything. That's the way that I'm kind of looking at. It, is I think that these guys that they're kind of training for, it kind of almost feels like this is their way of trying to get Shohei to stay and be like, Hey, look, we're actually, we actually care about you being here. We want to make sure the roster's up to yeah, your standards CJ to be able Crone to help. Is you. on an expiring contract and Randall Grichik. Jesus. They're not on. It's taking, taking me a while to find these damn contract. Randall Grichik is also on an uh, expiring contract. Both guys won't be here, but I still agree, though. Regardless well, of that, never it mind still shows show, I... but it still shows Shohei that they're putting in the effort to try to win. Um, newsflash, Shohei, if you resign, they're going to be selling every single year when you're on the team. But hey, it's showing them this year they did it. It's showing them that they don't know if they're going to actually do it next year. They will, but they don't know for sure. They will, but Shohei doesn't know for sure. It'll happen though. But, but yeah, I, I mean, yeah. yeah, more or less. I'm both correct and wrong at the same I time. I literally think it's all well, uh, I'm gonna give you that point. I, I agree, actually. It does show them. I still I I'm not putting that out of the question, him going back to the Angels. Uh, but that that went down Giolito, Grichik, and Crone. Uh Lance Lynn and Joe Kelly are Dodgers. We made that little swip swap. Uh, so real quick, uh, the Lance Lynn move, think of it like this. Think of it like this. We gave up Nick Robertson, another double A arm, some random guys, uh, and Noah Syndergaard for Kike Hernandez, Ahmed Rosario, Lance Lynn, and Joe Kelly. So don't think of Lance Lynn as the key upgrade in this overall trade here. Think of him as like the shit, like we're getting rid of Syndergaard. Let's try. Maybe we can get someone that does okay. If he doesn't, at least, well, it's not like we gave up much anyway. So at least okay. there's, uh, there is, it's a minor upgrade. Has a in much the point better where expected ERA. Yes. Than, uh, what's his <laughs> if name? we're just going by base ERA, score. it's still an upgrade by at least one point, which says a lot. <laughs> Yeah, so it's the expected ERA numbers that are better, though. Another thing with Lance Lynn is that let's say he gives up three in the first and he gets rocked. He can still just go six innings. You're not winning the game, but it's so you don't burn through the bullpen. Like, if the game is done, like, think of it like this. Maybe not, not in the playoffs, but end of the season, let's say we do get starters back. Like, I don't know, let's say Bobby Miller starts pitching really well and uh, 
somehow Jesus comes down and blesses Walker Buehler and he's back. Like, if Lance Lynn was our long reliever, like, we're either up a ton early or down a ton early, he could just give us five innings and save the bullpen. But also, keep Lance in mind... Lynn, it's not like he's going to be pitching big time for us in the playoffs. No, but but also do keep in mind with Lance, like, last year, he he had been very, very good. Like, this year is a down year from what his production was before. There's potential there. Obviously, age is an issue, whatever, but he does have the history and the credibility to show that he has done well before. And it's working off that maybe, maybe we can get something out of him. That's a little bit better than what he's had this season. Yeah. We'll, we'll see what ends up, ha- ends up happening. Like he's had a nice little stretch recently. Yeah. He's, this is his first, well, last year he had a three, nine, nine, but technically this first year above a four uh, ERA since 2018. So he's had a nice, he also pitched for the twins, right? At one point he was on the twins at one point. Uh, Yeah. In 2018. That adds up then that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. For like half a year. Uh, Then he got traded to the Yankees in, in a famous tweet where the Yankees said, quote, another arm at Lance Lynn. They, that's all was they that had for to Gary say Sanchez. That. Was that the Gary Sanchez trade? No, no, no. Gary was still on the team back then. I, I couldn't tell you who the twins got for, for him. I would not be able to either. But um, yeah. other thing we were just talking about the angels. This is basically this. Is, actually, I have one more thing for the MLB outside of this. Um, Shohei Otani last week uh, between our last episode last week and this episode had a complete game and two home runs. In one game. Um, do you mind? I think he had one hit that entire no, no, game. No, what I think what happened was it was a double header. The first game he had a complete game, and then in the second game of that, oh, it was on the same, header, day. same yes, day. Yes, yes, it was the he same day. Lead off home run, and then another home run. In that yes, game. but he is the first player to have a throw of complete game and have two home runs the same day yeah. since 1971. When Tungsten Arm O'Doyle. Wait, 1971. That's it. That was yeah, that was kind of a surprise too. Holy shit. That means some pitcher just raked that. Some Sonny, NL pitcher raked. Sonny Saber. Sonny Saber. Sabert. Serbert. Yeah, I can't say I know who that guy is, but shout out Sonny. Good shit. Yeah. Back in 1971. Good shit. Uh last yeah, thing, uh, by the but... way. <laughs> last thing. Last thing for the MLB. Oh, I, um, I got some more things. Max Scherzer is a Ranger and Jay Mont is a Ranger. So the Rangers are getting some Rangers are stacking up. They're stacking up. Yeah, I mean, the AL West, they're loading up. Apparently, Verlander, the Astros are looking to go get Verlander back. You don't think so? You think he's going to come to the Dodgers? No, but... it, well, it's like us and the Astros right now. See, here's the thing is, I've at least, I, I mean, some, some Mets fans are absolutely out of their mind. They're like, I wouldn't even entertain a Dodgers offer if Bobby Miller is not the first land name that comes out of their mouth. Bobby Miller is not getting traded. If, if Andrew Freeman no, yeah, like Bobby that, Miller, straight yeah, up like, just stats wise this year, like Verlander's not that much of an upgrade over Bobby Miller. So, and also keep in mind, Bobby Miller is the long term solution here. There's zero shot Bobby Miller's getting traded at all. Yeah, I mean Andrew Freeman, he's been historically in the past, he's been stingy on certain prospects. Corey Seager was a guy he refused to trade. Will Smith was a guy he refused to trade. Look how they turned out. Uh, so like. Julio Urias was a guy he refused to trade. Look how he turned out. Like, so, well, not this year. Don't look at this year, but look at the other years. He turned out well, damn it. But, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Andrew Gavin Freeman, the Lux guys too, he's stingy pre-injury. on. Lux, he's stingy on. Cartaya, he's stingy on. Bobby Miller, he's been stingy on. Pepio, we haven't been stingy on. We've been begging for someone to Please. buy. It's taken a while. But, yeah, I mean, not, not good that he's still been hurt since, like, a week <gasps> or two before the season began. But regardless, regardless. Things are moving into place. Uh, Jordan Hicks and Paul Sewell, two other top relievers I was looking at, they went to the Blue Jays and the D-backs. D-backs went after Sewell. Uh, but Seattle's selling Teoscar Hernandez, likely on the move too. I'm not saying we're going to go after him, but that's a name where watch out. I hope he doesn't go to the NL. Let's let's hope he goes to the AL, okay? Let's hope he stays in the AL. Uh, you know who's a who's who's a team that he just might just be interested in, might actually end up with him? The Orioles. Well, the Orioles have shown they're that they are willing to buy her now. They're first in the AL beast right now. So the 
the Orioles are going after it. Like they took the Rays over after the Rays crazy start. Uh, the Orioles right now, like a fun little idea. It's, it's not practical at all, but like if they traded for Shohei, they know he's not going to resign, but they just went for the rental and went for it. Like that'd just be fun. I'd be on team Baltimore all year. Just be Baltimore's like a just a that. fun team to watch this year. They're fun this year. In two years, we're going to be saying fuck Baltimore because they're going to be dominant. But for now, it's fun. Yeah. Watch out. Watch yeah. out. We're going to yeah. be hating them pretty yeah. soon here. Uh, but yeah, for now, it's fun. Uh, Speaking of uh, Diamondbacks, we're going to be, for us, it's really going to be drilled in. But like for the rest of the country included, everyone's going to be saying fuck the Diamondbacks. So I'm not ready excited. For that. I'm Arizona not excited and Baltimore, Simon. the two massive markets uh, representing the <laughs> West and East Coast, Baltimore and fucking Phoenix. All right, let's go, baby. Imagine if you had a if you had a a MLB championship between the Orioles and the Diamondbacks. It's gonna actually happen. Like we're joking. We've been saying this for like months now, but like 2028. <laughs> yeah. It'll be a it'll be a repeat World Series. It'll be a repeat. Allie Rushman like, wins MVP. Eesh. Yeah, Gunner Gunner Henderson wins uh AL AL MVP for like the AL postseason. Then Adley over the top in the World Series takes home World Series MVP. Where we can, go, uh, uh, we can watch Rob Manfred had have, have another stroke presenting. The World Series MVP award, like he did with Corey Seager, <laughs> one of the funniest things. He wasn't actually having a stroke, but it was like one of those things where he had the the earpiece in and the echo. So every time he talked, there'd just be a delay and he'd be hearing himself. And he was like talking really slow, and it sounded like he was having a stroke. So uh... <laughs> uh, last thing that I wanted to say, by the way, so uh, the A's fan base has scheduled another reverse boycott. Yeah, but they feel the same. I didn't quite read into um, the details this time. Here's the crazy. deal: after how successful the last one was, keep in mind their tickets have been like five dollars to go to the games, yeah. like five dollars to go to an A's game. Okay, the average ticket price is ten dollars. After the success for the I last one, they say the, club tickets might be cheap, but they don't they don't have club tickets. The Those A's fan, the, the A's, A's front <laughs> office, the A's ownership after the success of the last one found out what day the fan base was scheduling the uh, reverse what boycott. Crazy promotion on it. Or and something. they upped the tickets from $10 average to $45 oh, that's on average. Smart. That's smart. Smart for them. But also, Are that is... to go back to boycotting that it is It is the most shittiest thing. Like, that is a oh, Dan so Snyder shitty. move. That's so shitty. Oh, so damn. Oh, oh my God. Oh, so damn. So, so bad. Damn. Good call. Good call. That's so Snyder of him. Uh, of that group I, of well i'm not sure who their exact owner is but for the sake of it it's brad pitt brad pitt you asshole why why brad <laughs> you piece of shit billy bean billy bean brad pitt and jonah hill you guys are dicks uh <laughs> no but uh, on a serious note the a's like we'll see what happens when they go to vegas they're definitely going to keep the Las going vegas a's like how they kept las vegas raiders those names those just teams are iconic you're not going to change the name or anything uh the one thing though is like for the oakland a's like they one of their hats i like has the o and like one of their like uh alternate logos has the o that's gonna switch to an lv and i'm not gonna do an l it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it makes yeah, sense for their franchise. Stay on with the franchise. Stay on exactly. Brand. I just yeah. also, by the way, I love the fact that Vegas is poaching every team from just Oakland. It's only Oakland. They poach just from Oakland. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's also going to look weird. Like, I like their jersey where it says Oakland on the front. So I'm going to say Los. Ugh, it's going to look but I feel like they can keep whatever. that as like an whatever. alternate. We're, we're spending too much time talking about the Oakland A's, but I yeah, feel like they could, they, they could keep that as an alternate. The same way that the Lakers have the Minneapolis ones. They still sometimes wear. It could be their city connect. It could yeah, be their city connect. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> city connect you with go. Vegas with the Oakland throwbacks. Yeah, makes perfect <sighs> sense. Uh, but yeah, okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, got some college football news. Unless there's another topic we want to dive oh. into right now. Okay, okay. So starting off with college football, uh, the little rumor going around right now, Everett, some fun SEC NIL updates. So the rumor going around is that. Maryland quarterback and younger brother of Tua, Talia Tagovailoa, uh, was offered $1.5 million by an 
unnamed SEC school to be their quarterback. Uh, shout out the Auburn Tigers and Hugh Freeze. So Auburn offered Talia one and a half million dollars to be their quarterback next year. Uh, interesting development. Uh, let's just the rumor was going around that Marvin Harrison Jr. was offered two million from USC to come play for them. Talia one and a half million. Ever that begs me to ask the question: How much? money if you were alabama would you have to pay for caleb williams how much money well first thing that i'm going to say is if i'm marvin harrison if i'm marvin harrison and i I find crazy here well first thing i'm gonna say is if i'm marvin harrison and i find out that i was only offered five hundred thousand dollars more than i can understand the quarterback difference talia's good talia's good he he is he is good but it's marv we're talking about if i'm marv and i find out that's the difference that is the most disrespectful thing that now that, offer now I he's going to go off for 2023. Now he's going to go off. Now he's <laughs> going to. It's if it's the USC Ohio State championship game. Well, USC is getting very murdered. ironically. Marv recently had a quote. So like he recently just signed a brand deal. I forget with who. It was somewhere really sick. It might have been with like Mercedes Benz, Columbus, or some shit or something. And after he signed the brand deal, the NIL deal, he was like. We go to Ohio State. We're not here for NIL deals. We're here to get developed. I mean, that is easy to say after you get like a Mercedes Benz deal <laughs> uh, or whatever the fuck. But, uh, but yeah, go but off. No, Marv, if, go if off I am, <laughs> if I am Caleb Williams, if I am Caleb Williams, I, the starting more? the starting number has to be like at least six and a half. Yeah, I was gonna say eight figures, but it's just one year, so it wouldn't be that much. But like, yeah, six and a half, seven. I'd say like six and a half, seven. Yeah. Because, I I mean, we're talking, but we also, you also have to keep in mind, it's a one year rental. No, 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 I know, I know. But it's a one year rental. But if you're Caleb, going to the NFL, if you're, if you're Caleb too, though, now you have to be like, all right, do I get this now or do I get to stay in Los Angeles in that market on this team? And Lincoln Riley. And Lincoln Riley. It's like that all included. So, like, if you're like, if it's, if it's, if it is, let's say it's, fucking Rutgers let's say Rutgers offering you 12 no, million no, no, yeah. dollars I mean that's that's not a good question well 12 million might have the, Caleb thinking let's say know. let's say let's know. say for the hypothetical it's Rutgers or Northwestern whatever it's 12 million if I was Caleb I wouldn't take it but I'm not Caleb so I don't know what he would do but let's say let's say it's 12 million dollars <laughs> and it's between that or you getting to be in Los Angeles now this is the thing in this in this hypothetical scenario, we have to pretend what is Caleb's current NIL money at USC. So what do we think that is right now? Three. I would say it's like three to four. Three. three. I'd probably say three. Maybe after last season, it might be up a little more, but let's say three. So yeah, the fingernail paints really X, got really got him that extra four money. X upgrade. 4x upgrade all i'm saying by the way if caleb williams caleb williams caleb if you start if you start paying nil deals on your fingernails you owe grant royalty yeah, I get royalties fees. yes yeah Thank royalty you. fees I do. I do i do yeah no i mean i i trademarked that concept so you, you got to talk to my lawyers if you want to do that caleb uh and by lawyers i mean unnamed intern uh but yeah <laughs> uh yeah so talia was given that money uh We'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. NIL, it's only getting crazier. I think eventually these these NIL numbers are going to start getting disclosed. I think eventually that'll start happening. For the time being, though, they're keeping that shit under wraps. We don't know the exact numbers. The only person to leak the number count was Quinn Ewers when he signed his deal with Ohio State. Like immediately, he just came to Ohio State for the NIL and the hype on his <laughs> Instagram. Literally, that's why he went. But yeah, okay, moving on to the recruiting updates. So First things first, four-star uh, offensive tackle from Texas committed to Tennessee, Bennett Warren Everett. He's six, seven and a half, and he's 330 pounds. He's 18 years old. Uh, <laughs> four-star linebacker from Virginia committed to Georgia. Georgia, the rich just keeps on getting richer. They're getting more uh, four-stars. Four-star cornerback Charles Lester has committed to Florida State. Uh Auburn flipped five-star receiver Perry Thompson from Alabama. That's that's the red flags, ladies and gentlemen. They just gave out one and a half million to Talia, and they flipped a Bama commit. So Auburn, watch out, people. We thought AM was the bad guys. It's Auburn. 
All right. Yeah, they, they're, the other SEC they're on the they're on the watch keep list on, for the keep S- your eye on Auburn's fucking NIL. They, they, they are they're dirty. on the they're on the preseason watch list for the SMU death penalty award. Watch out. Watch out because yeah, no, they are a preseason front runner for that award. So hey, hey, I'm keeping my eyes on them. I, I hope right? you do realize, by the way, that when you go over these segments about recruiting the, the recruiting trail, I have zero clue what you're talking about. I, I that's why I try to bring up the the numbers rankings to give you. Some I get contact. the stars, but I have zero clue who any of these people are. No, yeah, for the most part, like none of these guys are gonna get hurt. Like, well, I take that back. Like the guys I just listed, other than the Tennessee guy, because it's Tennessee. But the other guys, yeah, like you'll you'll be you'll be hearing them one day. Uh, Perry Thompson, the receiver, that's a name that like. I couldn't remember the last time Auburn got a really good receiver. Like, I couldn't tell you the last time that happened. Like, that was a crazy big win for them. Uh, Also, though, the the biggest news of the weekend, four-star corner, number 34 player in the country, number one player in the state of Ohio, Aaron Scott, has committed to Ohio State Everett. I showed you his commitment video before, but Aaron Scott, it was down to Oregon, Ohio State, Michigan down when he was doing his hat selection that every recruit does now which i mean that's just so much sketch comedy material from those there's so that's so a many key ideas. that's a key and peel sketch yeah, right yeah, that's there a, like if there's they were so many like it. key and peel sketch ideas i have for that but aaron scott leading up throughout the entire recruitment process he was trolling michigan he was wearing all michigan gear to all the recruiting camps and everything wearing michigan gloves shoes sleeves or cleats everything uh and for his recruitment video he pulls out the organ hat throws that away immediately they were never in the picture we all knew that then he pulls out the ohio state hat about to put it on then throws it away my heart dropped when i watched <laughs> that and we were watching me and my brother we were watching that in dodger stadium because i mean the dodger game wasn't looking pretty so we were just watching the aaron scott commitment on his instagram live uh and then he takes out the Michigan bag, takes the Michigan hat, puts it down, pulls out the Michigan backpack, unzips it, pulls out the Ohio State jersey, puts that on. The emotions were running wild in around like the bottom of the eighth at Dodger Stadium. The emotions were getting to the best of me there. Things were things were wild when that happened. Uh, but Aaron Scott is a Buckeye. Uh, number one, number two, number three, and I think number four players in Ohio all committed to Ohio State. So they locked up all the Ohio boys they wanted. Uh, yeah, good news. Uh, Michigan also famous. <laughs> I'm not sure if you saw this. You better have seen this. Uh, a Michigan recruit for the annual Big House Barbecue Cookout. He took a picture of his food and. Oh yeah, I have seen that. I have. Let's seen just that, yeah. say Twitter had a field day. So this boy was. Sorry, sorry, sorry. X. Glizzies. X had a field day. Yeah, yeah. X I mean, had a field day. Yeah, he was having a. Yeah, X. Oh, X had a field day. The the X users were having a field day at going. I mean, they had amazing X's. No longer tweets. Phenomenal X's. Uh, to talk about it. Uh, but let's just say that. He, Kid was kid was grubbing boiled glizzies, um, some 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 Ralph's Gelson's chicken tenders, <laughs> uh, without any ranch or anything, no barbecue, no I mean, sauces. I'm a ranch guy, I'm a ranch guy, you know me, or or any like I ketchup barbecue sauce or anything, none of that. Mustard, so, no condiments. Some some dry ass dry chicken tenders. Flake. If you've ever had, this you is can going tell on. like that's the mac and cheese where like. You could tell that shit came in Look, like a giant bowl, and when this, we this were was like mixing it around. They, it they sounds hit like up alien guts. Okay, like, they hit up the local, not Rouse's, not not Galson's, not Ralph's, not Lunds and Barley's, not whatever the the. They had like the shout local out Lunds, the goat, the goat. They hit up the local like Cub Foods. And went in there. the The local, no, they, the they local hit up like Seven Eleven. No, not even Seven Eleven. Nice. They're, the, they're, the, they're local, like youth quick trip. baseball, like bat and grill, they went, like they went like, to the they went to the local quick trip. Got the chicken tenders that have been sitting in there under the heat lamp for the last two and a half days. Yeah, no, the the mac and cheese that were were <laughs> nice and crusty to be sold by yesterday. <laughs> got those. 
they uh they had the dude in the back come up and and boil one of the hot dogs oh, in the coffee glizzies. maker boiled glizzies hell yeah and then they got you know the mac and cheese that they just you know opted it's say like it's the really old stale mac and cheese you get from the grocery stores yeah, no, not not a good look out, out of Michigan's uh, recruiting. Uh, Don't worry, John John Harbaugh, John Harbaugh, or Jim Jim Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh is just really really trying to not get another it's not cheeseburgers. It's trying right. to not get another issue citation with cheeseburgers. Yeah, no. If anything, right. if anything, Jimmy's just playing by the rules, guys. He's he's doing what you guys asked. Uh, still going to be honest. That's just ridiculous <laughs> that he's getting suspended for buying a kid. Well, hey, but you love it. He's getting suspended for lying. You but love the it. fact that he even had to like lie to help cover up buying a kid a cheeseburger is just like jesus what are we doing guys? <laughs> tennessee had up to 300 300 violations everett 300 okay that's so many that's so many <laughs> but oh whatever God. uh ending off the college football segment with top 10 college football offensive lines heading into 2023 uh for this one I actually am thinking of going one to ten, starting from the top. But what do you think? You tell me. One Michigan. Yeah. Okay, one to ten. Yeah. Okay. Do so because everyone knows who one is, so that's why I'm thinking just go them once. So Michigan, Georgia, Alabama, Texas, Notre Dame, Oregon State, LSU, USC, Penn State. Florida State. So I have to start off with the name that everyone's like, what the fuck? Uh, Oregon State. Oregon State's returning a lot, a lot of help. So fun fact, last year, Oregon State, of their offensive tackle grades, I believe uh, Notre Dame, they have the best returning offensive tackle, Joe Alt, if it comes to those stupid-ass grading websites, in my opinion. The best returning PFF. tackle. P- P- uh, P- the best returning tackle is Olu Fashanu on Penn State, but Notre Dame is a better returning tackle duo than Penn State, and so does Oregon State. Oregon State, very good tackle duo. DJ, DJ, I can understand why he went to Oregon State now. He's got a good, a good group of big boys. Hey, you don't want to say that last. You don't want to say that last. No, no, no. Day, not you? even trying that shit. <laughs> not saying the uh-uh, last name. Hell no. Uh-uh, I, no. I know better. I've learned my lesson. No. Over it. But yeah, DJ, I understand what he's doing. I, I can see it from a health hey, it's perspective. DJ, we DJ, you. We all saw DJ, we'll call him DJ, you. DJ, you. Yes, we all saw. DJ, you. We all saw how much it hurts to get hit. So DJ, DJ, you. I respect the move. So <laughs> Oregon State, watch out. They, they got a really good line. All right, uh, look. I'll, I'll, before you get into more into more of the teams here on the list, I, I'm I'm not gonna lie. I, I feel a little bit disrespected, a little bit slighted, a little bit shaded. Uh, by your list, um, Tulane's got to be an honorable mention at a minimum. Uh, well, uh, I yeah. So when it comes to Tulane, sincere Hainsworth, uh, there are a lot of recruiting websites pointing out some blasphemy, saying he was the second best center in the country, the best center in the country. Uh, I'd go so far to say the best lineman in the country, maybe the best offensive player in the country. I'm not. I'm not going to say that part. Offensive lineman, yes, though. Uh, I, you know, there's just, uh, I, after I've taken my deep dive on Tulane, you guys got some moving parts on the offensive line. I did not research. I have no idea. I know you have not at all. I know you have. Grant, Grant, uh, Grant has not, Grant has not done his deep dive yet. Question marks uh, that, that we got to look into. Uh, there uh, there are not dive. question you got a marks. Let's clarify that. There are, no, there, there are no question marks out here. on a key staff member in Jake Stone. That's a hole we have to fill. <laughs> He's so. not even on the offensive line. <laughs> it's not even over there. I mean, I still it. still got to account for that loss. Uh, so th- there's a lot of things moving around. Oh my so, God. Uh, yeah, we're, we're I mean, we're, we're, we're waiting on the two lane. At least do a satisfaction dive. and give an honorable we're mention waiting, to the boys. We're waiting but... on the two lane deep dive that that'll be coming up soon. Uh, but yeah, when is it yeah. coming up? This is the, the unnamed it's, intern it's tell it's you something up. that I don't I mean, know. Training about. camp begins Wednesday. So oh, shit, I, I really shouldn't even be doing these lists yet. Really, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the unnamed intern is gonna have a field day with you tomorrow morning. Yeah, I mean, shit, shit. Don't hate the player, hate the game. No, but no, that's I'm, all... I'm hating. I'm no, hating the. No, I'm hating the player. Do not I'm, hate the player. I'm nope. hating the player. It's a player's decision, by no, the way. That the no, 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 no. The only players we hate is Anthony Trash. Those are the only players we hate <laughs> in this industry. So no, no, we're hating the game here. But 
Uh, that was my college uh, football minute. Uh, unless you had anything else ever. That was I, much I know, longer than a I minute. Know you have, yeah. I, I know you're ready to release your your Maction preview. You did a deep dive on the Mac. So <laughs> Don't, I you're do ready not to get me that. started on the Maction. <laughs> Oh my uh, the God. The Maction is going to be live this year. Get ready for Tuesdays, folks. The Maction might be, be the most underrated conference ever coming into this year. They actually, they might have four teams going into the playoffs this year. Yeah, uh, That's how underrated they are. Uh, I mean, spearheaded by a fierce offensive guard in Parker Titsworth out of Ohio. <laughs> so uh, they got a phenomenal, yeah. phenomenal group of guys out there. He, in, he is the, the biggest diamond in the rough gem for any team going to next year. Biggest diamond in the rough since Tyreek Hill, okay, out of South oh Alabama. Biggest, uh, biggest diamond in the rough since, okay. <laughs> we, we haven't seen a guy like this out of a power five. Trust me. On power five school in a while. It becomes anything else. It's it. What, what is written on the, on the, in draft day? What is it written? What's on his, on his, uh, sticky note. It Vontae Mack or, uh, Bo Callahan. <sighs> no, Vontae Mack, no matter what Parker Titsworth, no, no matter, matter what, what. <laughs> Parker Titsworth, no matter what Parker Titsworth. Parker Titsworth for Heisman. Okay, guys, let, let, let's get it going. I don't know if no, I don't know if uh, O'Lyman will ever win, but yeah, definitely not. But yeah, <laughs> that, that's all I had on the college football update. Moving on okay. to the NFL. NFL. We're gonna, save, we're gonna save the mud wrestling fight for a second, but ever let's get the miscellaneous miscellaneous NFL. Yeah, you're really hitting them with that fish line and sinker, hook line and sinker over there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. We are, we're saving the mud fight. First thing, first thing that I I have, the first thing that I have, just a general, just a quick little thing. Uh, This has been reported by multiple different sources, but Aaron Rodgers uh, notably took a very substantial pay cut uh, when he joined the Jets. He took a $35 million pay cut. His response as to why that was the case was because, quote, big names move at the trade deadline now. And he wanted to make sure that if somebody valuable came available, that they would be able to get them. Now, There's obviously, I mean, this just seems, he seems like a hero. He seems, there, I, I, I mean, that's one like thing this in green Bay. I know you don't know. I do that, not. I, wish I do not. I do not. Uh, there has been reports of substantiated reports, but there have been reports that Devonte Adams might be trying to get a trade to go to the jets we made the joke about this the other year about how the league would be broken. Devontae Adams just leaves, goes, it's like, all right, Chris, we're crossing a trade. I'm going to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to play with Tom Brady after Giselle breaks up with Tom Brady. The league is broken. We made a joke about that, clipped it really well. Uh, I do actually expect this year Devontae Adams to request a trade at the deadline from a horrendous Raiders team to go to the Jets to be with Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, l- let's see. Let's see what ends up happening. Uh, when it comes to Aaron Rodgers, I just really want to focus on the aspect of him just being a great human being, taking the pay cut in general. Uh, that's something you don't see out of a lot of quarterbacks in the NFL. Maybe if a guy like Kirk Cousins was a little more humble and generous and gave okay. Him his All right. You don't, don't be, don't be slight. <laughs> don't, don't be disrespecting Kirk like that. You, you come on now. You can't be doing that. I mean, before, Justin before just signed a pretty big contract. I mean, if I were him, I would give up half of that, give it straight to my running. Back, well, you know, you know who you should really, you, you know who you should really uh, be talking about. You know who you should be really talking about. Patrick Zach Mahomes. Wilson. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Patrick, I mean, yeah. yeah, Zach Wilson should give his entire contract up. That's how bad he is. But yes. charity. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> not to the running back room. God, he no, needs to. He needs to give charity. it away to to like a LASIK. Uh, a LASIK research institute because that's how bad his eyesight is during games. Yeah, it's 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 not the greatest uh, look right now for Zach Wilson. When it, yeah, I mean, if it comes to that entire team, you know, Garrett's also having some high ankle sprain issues. That's not going great. Uh, but we'll see who's available. We'll see what's a big name guy they can go. Acquire. I do. I I I, uh, I do. I do kind of think, I mean, we both think the Raiders are not going to be good this year. Like that is kind of a, a, an assumption because Devontae's stuck there. He's only got a couple more years left. And obviously the Raiders might just want to be rebuilding at this point. I think that it's not a, something that's that outlandish to think that Devontae might get traded to the Jets. Yeah, it's not that crazy. I mean, that'd be fun too. That'd be a fun little time. Be great for my, uh, my long-term parlay, but yeah be fantastic for my parlay yeah uh, yeah so i i think 
when it comes to New York, that situation over there, yeah, Aaron Rodgers, great guy. I don't know how much cap room they have right now. What's like I am not looked into. I wouldn't be able to know. I'm not going to look it up either. But yeah, he's just a great guy. But okay. Uh, okay. And before we get into the mud fight and uh, the surprising keeps and cuts, one other thing. Uh, in training camp the other day, was it today or yesterday? Jamison Williams in training camp. Uh, I think, think it was today. It was today. Uh, here is the, the issue surrounding Jamison Williams. And this has been all over Vikings Twitter because obviously the pick that the Lions used to get JMO was a Vikings pick. It was a trade. Jamison Williams today, I guess this was a, a day before this came out. This is on the 31st of July. Dropped two passes during practice, struggled in one-on-ones, and to top it all off, tried to beat up an undrafted rookie defensive back after he forced an incompletion and started trash talking. Jameson Williams, which is pretty, pretty soft. That's that's that is that is pretty, pretty soft, if if you do ask me. So a lot of people in Vikings Twitter, at least, uh, I know you're a JMO fan, a JMO stan. A lot of people on Vikings Twitter at least have been saying that this is a W for the Vikings every single time that something comes up because every single time something comes up with JMO, it's always there's been some issue. He's not looked good. He's fighting. People's getting suspended. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, training camp today for Jameson Williams, not ideal. Yeah, it didn't quite go to plan. I mean, that's not something we could say. So, yeah, I mean, if you're looking at it from that angle, no. Now didn't go to plan. But if you're looking at it from the angle of Jameson Williams is just out there, you know, getting ready to be a key contributor to the Detroit Lions offense, that's that's a positive takeaway you get out from today. So uh, what you... Yeah, while we're on the topic of training camp subjects, I think it's really interesting that every single player has reportedly looked good out of training camp except Jameson Williams and Trey Lance. Uh, I think it's really interesting. Every single player has looked good in training camp, according to Twitter, except Jamison Williams and Trey Lance. I don't know. I don't know. I Seems a little, a little interesting to me. Some other names recently that had a ton of preseason hype, Gabe Davis last year. Surprisingly, Zach Wilson. Zach, yeah. Yeah, Zach Wilson. Surprisingly, uh, yeah. I, uh, You know, some... Quinton Johnston has had a, a decent amount. Bijan, Jameer Gibbs. Of hate? No, no, no. Of oh, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of hate. Uh, not many people are getting hate. Not many people are getting hated. Not, not really. Which the big two. I mean, not two... Well, well. I mean, if all those players are looking good, then whoever they're going up against, unless they're having amazing reps, I mean, shit. Good chance that whoever my they're going favorite, up against isn't looking my good. My favorite of everything though is Bijan. Bijan Robinson, one he he went up against his forty five year old running back coach. That's one thing. There, yeah, they, the there other were thing some clips of him running against his coach. The uh, other thing like is, that. um, he went up against he a, a like six foot flat white middle linebacker. Nobody's ever seen like he's on the scout team for the Falcons, and that's the clip where he made like the one handed catch, and everybody yeah. was talking that up. I'm not trying to trash Bijan, but it's just like, guys, come on. This isn't the reason. We'll see. Hey, look, what, the one thing that we forgot to mention, though, the one thing we forgot to mention, we have football this week. Yeah. We have football this week. Yes. So, so once we get into the actual preseason, we'll start seeing these guys. But this is officially, it is officially the start of the preseason this Thursday. Yeah, there's football on, finally. Football Football is so close to being back. We are. That's how desperate we are. Is we are watching the five, Hall of Fame six game. Six weeks away from like the actual regular season, but about so it's that first week of September. But we have college football. Out. I'm also excited for Jets Hard Knocks this year. I'm really excited. So that's gonna be great. Apparently, Joe Burrow's on quarterbacks too. Yeah, yeah. Joe Burrow. Justin Herbert hasn't best. been ruled out either. Yeah, like Herbert was on Pat McAfee today, and he was. Was saying, he actually? So, that's kind of surprising. Yeah, no, like, then the first thing he said, they're like, thank you, Justin. We know how much you love doing media. Uh, but, I mean, if it were up to me, you just got paid $262.5 million. The least you could do is go on Pat McAfee, like the least pressure interview you could possibly do, essentially. Uh, well, well, 
Pat McAfee's, well, maybe on ESPN, they're not trying to get you anymore if they have you as a guest, but they have Herbert on. They asked him about it in 2020, his rookie year, Chargers were hard knocks. So he was saying, like, yeah, like, if you let it be a distraction, it'll be a distraction. But he said, like, but if, if you just go out and do your thing, he pretty much was saying that he's open to doing quarterback season two. That's essentially what he was saying. I feel like it's a little bit more invasive. The quarterback's a little bit more invasive. A hundred percent. Uh, but like, it's not on the same way. That would make me so happy. You just got to see your quarterback behind the scenes. And like Justin Herbert literally hides from cameras. So like, that would be fantastic. Hey, look, it's a year for going outside your comfort zone. Let's go outside your comfort zone. Justin Justin is can put on his big boy pants. I think, I think he can do it. I think also all I'm saying is the track record for the quarterbacks on quarterback. You have MVP and Super Bowl winner, playoff quarterback, and a quarterback who doesn't make it at all. Yeah. yeah. So based on that, if you have Joe Burrow and and Justin Herbert, I mean, we're assuming that they're going to make the playoffs. So it's either he makes playoffs or he wins MVP and wins Super Bowl. So yeah, yeah. Not a bad trade off. Yeah, yeah. Not a bad trade off. Uh, but okay, let's get into the mud fight. Okay, Jonathan Taylor versus Jim Ursay. This subject has touched really close home to me as a lifelong Wisconsin Badger fan. So, uh, Jonathan Taylor's Stop my guy. Stop the cap. Stop Jonathan the cap. Taylor's my guy. I've loved him my whole life. Uh, yeah, Jonathan he's only Taylor. saying this because he just drafted him in yeah, Dynasty. No, I mean, if I didn't have him in Dynasty, I probably wouldn't have really read up on this shit. But, Jonathan Taylor, I am your guy. So, this all began a couple days ago. When Jim Irsay and JT reportedly did not have a meeting go uh, go over well, uh, the meeting did not go well. Wasn't it in their RV stuff. truck too? <laughs> no confirmation on that detail. That's a new. <laughs> that's news to me. I did not know that. I'm pretty <laughs> sure Jim Irsay had an RV pull up on the side of the practice when he was invited. Was it like specifically like Jim's RV? It was specifically or was it a training camp. No, 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 no. It's specifically Jim's Special luxury RV, RV. Oh, that he invited RV. JT it's into exactly. off the side of of camp. Yeah, so Ursay said after that meeting he will not re-sign JT to a long-term contract, and he also confirmed in a tweet, and I quote, if I die tonight and Jonathan Taylor is out of the league, no one's going to miss us. So brutal quote to come from your boss, uh, an <laughs> owner of the franchise, who he said, I could not give less of a fuck about you and the rest of your life. Uh, so JT naturally demanded a trade out of Indy afterwards to which Jim Ursay responded. We aren't trading you. Like I'm seeing a lot of memes right now. Jonathan Taylor, like if you're not going to resign me, trade me. And it's just Jim Ursay just responding. No period. Uh, that's it. I've Every seen, I've seen, him, I've seen no. Jonathan. I've seen Jonathan Taylor be like, Hey, like, can you trade me? And they're like, no, because we're not going to get enough for you. And he goes, okay, then resign me. They go, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But <laughs> afterwards, the Colts claim that JT reported to camp complaining of back, uh, back pain. And apparently the Colts are considering placing JT on the non-football related injury list or some shit. I don't know the exact terminology. Uh, All these which- conspiracy. To which the Colts wouldn't need to pay JT this year and delay his free agency another year. The last thing Jonathan Taylor wants is that. Uh, then, so wait, JT if he got put on that said, list, he's out for the year. Yeah, yeah, he's not playing this year. Oh, yeah, and it delays his contract and everything. That's how the, that's how the Colts can assert their dominance over the NFLPA. Him. As a dynasty owner, I would not like that. Uh, <laughs> then JT reported back saying he never had any back pain uh told the guy to check your sources get them correct and i went to bed last night thinking like oh we're fine then i woke up this morning and saw a video of jonathan taylor grandpa walking at the colts training camp that dude's back is fucked oh jonathan taylor was lying that dude's back is (laughs) fucked that dude's back is not good jonathan taylor does not look healthy he literally looked like my grandpa walking around he, he could not walk. It's not a good sight. So, yeah, Jonathan Taylor was capping. Those sources were right. Uh, yeah. All right, so let's get into the mud fight aspect of this. Yeah, so, okay, there's only one way to settle this beef. There's only one way to settle this dilemma with an old-school, like, college girl mud fight, a mud wrestling fight. That's the only way to settle this shit, okay? So, Jim Irsay, Jonathan Taylor, 
Hanes Tidy Whitey's mud fight in a blow up plastic pool. That atmosphere, I want slippage, okay? It needs to be on plastic because you cannot get any fucking grip. I want it slipping. I want people to be eating mud shit constantly in this fight. So Jonathan Taylor versus Jim Irsay in tidy whiteys. Jim Irsay, it'll be a spectacle to see this, just first of all, them being in tidy whiteys. Maybe not Hanes. We could do a different brand. Maybe Calvin Klein. We can, you know, get a more luxury brand in there if we want. Yeah, and sponsored if- by Fruit of the Loom. Uh, yeah, no, that would probably be better. But yeah, these are the things that I'm looking into. But a mud wrestling fight, these are the stakes on the line. If Jonathan yeah, you're Taylor, really looking into these things. If Jonathan Taylor wins, Jonathan Taylor has a choice. He has an option. He can either exercise a a clause in a contract that gives him an extension to be the highest paid running back in Indianapolis Colts history, not in NFL history, you dumbass running backs will never actually win this. But in Colts history, I think like Edgar and James might be that. Probably. I don't no, know. I don't know. No, Maybe Zeke. not for contract. Zeke, I think, has the highest well, well, paid just per year. Well, just Colts. Just Colts. Oh, oh, just Colts. Yeah, it's probably. Yeah, no, 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 no. He's losing. He's not actually going to win this. Like, he's not actually <laughs> winning this ever. Like, running backs are losing. It's probably, it's probably, it's probably, We're going to make yeah. him think he wins it. Uh, But like... <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. I, I'm gonna think it might be might be James. I don't know. Maybe like Frank Gore at the end was on the Colts. Maybe he still got. A I lot mean, of Trent money. Richardson had one year on there. Don't forget that too. Yeah, I, I don't know. But so he has a choice to either exercise that or he can demand a trade out. But he doesn't get a guaranteed contract. You don't get a guaranteed contract. Just a demand a trade out. So that's if he wins. If he loses. If Jim Ursay does the impossible and beats Jonathan Taylor in a mud wrestling match, then Jonathan Taylor, for the rest of his career, can only play for the Indianapolis Colts. And after this contract expires, has to play for the uh, veteran minimum every single year with zero <laughs> guaranteed money. That is the deal. I feel like that's fair odds considering, well, actually, no, with his back now, I don't really know if it'd be fair, but. Um, there. At a point. Yeah. Now, what? if I'm Jonathan Taylor, I would hold out of this fight and wait to do it until healthy. That's how you do it. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, obviously, I'm kidding with the mud wrestling fight, but the Jonathan Taylor... It's a good clip, it's though. Getting it's, a, it's getting messy. It's getting disgusting. I don't like it's it. A good clip. I don't like it at all. It's a, it is a ambiguously worded mud fight. I am... Yeah, extremely, extremely concerned about what could end up happening. Yeah, and let's also reiterate, Grant is only concerned due to the fact he owns Jonathan Taylor in Dynasty. Yeah, I mean, best case scenario, they actually do trade him. Uh, for you, yes. Yeah. No, 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 that's not Jackson, for, me, for me. No, no, no. I'm not thinking about, like, Jonathan Taylor's future, the Colts' future, anything. Um, about my future okay. here. Uh, okay. Before, before I get into my keeps and cuts, we got one last topic, topic for the day. Oh, how could I forget? <sighs> Braxton Berrios. Yeah, Braxton Berrios, Alex Earl. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're not going to hover around this too long, but let's spill all the tea right now. So Alex Earl and Braxton Berrios, let's start off with this. They've, they've been, like, together for a while now. Uh, apparently, recently in the Hamptons, Alex Earl was hooking up with a 17-year-old going to prom? I think. I don't know. He's with his grandmother the next day so i really i, don't know I really don't know how it works involved. i mean it's summer so it's not like they're pro- I, I could have sworn i heard something about like a prom he's homeschooled i don't know not entirely sure but alex Earl was hooking up with a 17 year old who was 17 and 364 days old so in all reality shout out that kid you're a fucking legend bro but but braxton barrios let's get to the real shit here braxton barrios this upcoming season now a miami dolphin correct mm-hmm. now a yeah. miami dolphin Matched up with Tua and vaping McDaniel on the sideline. So there's oh, don't some, forget there's gonna be his some wide smoke. receiver coach is Wes Motherfucking Welker. Oh God, damn! I didn't know. I didn't know that. Oh yeah. Shit. Okay. Okay. So I mean, Wes Welker can instill just that hard work, that grit, that first one in, last one out mentality, not only into Barrios but also in Tyreek and Waddle. And I mean, the results. Holy shit. Holy shit. Imagine a player 
imagine if you could just take transfer Wes Welker's just shiftiness, hard work, gym rat ability just to his receiver room. That's what we're going to see. And we're going to see a direct translation to Braxton Berrios, especially for no particular reason. No particular reason at all. Definitely not. Nope. Mm-mm. I think I heard they're interested in re-signing Chris Hogan too. No particular reason Maybe why Dan, Danny, Danny Amendola. Amendola. I heard they're interested in him. I couldn't know why. Do you uh, think Cole Julian Beasley, Julian Edelman's they were really coming upset out of... when they didn't sign Cole Beasley? Uh, Julian Edelman's really know coming why. out of retirement for them. Yeah, Danny Woodhead is also coming out of retirement. I uh, heard they're trading for Rex Burkhead too. But yeah, they're just getting the gang <laughs> back together. Eric Decker's coming back. Literally just listed every white guy's skill. Adam yeah, Thielen. Yeah, Thielen's making a move over there too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Miles Austin. Uh, he's coming out of retirement too. Scoin but... work from from the Rams. Yeah, making right. a move. Uh, we're we're having too much fun here, but yeah, yeah. I'm all serious though. Uh, watch out for the Barrios revenge tour. <laughs> watch out for the Barrios revenge. It's gonna tour. be disgusting. Uh, Alex Earl, you don't know what beast you just created. Okay, <laughs> you don't know. You don't know what you just did. But yeah, all right. On to the keeps and comes. Okay. Uh, first thing, first thing, I uh, I made a I made a promise to one of our fans. Uh, this is to the unnamed intern. This is a message for when you're editing this. Um, our unnamed intern was specifically instructed to use a specific uh, set of comments for one of our TikToks. Did not happen. All right. I need to apologize on behalf of our unnamed intern. Okay. On an intern, it's not acceptable. It can't be happening. Okay. Yeah, the bucket hats, the, the hell, bucket dude. hats, the bucket hats have been suspended because of this. All right, you're on a six day probation. Let's, let's, let's get that out of the way. Oh damn. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna find out through this. All right. I mean, he, he deserves it. He deserves it. Okay. Uh, Dolphins surprise and keeps in cover. We're gonna start with the Dolphins today. Okay. Speaking of Braxton Berries, perfect, perfect. <clears throat> Dolphins surprise and keeps and cuts. Here we go. Keep. Skylar Thompson, Salvin Ahmed, Keon Crossan, Jalen Tyman, and Eric Sauber. Cut, Miles Gaskin, Freddie Swain, and Tyler Croft. Yeah, so uh, interesting name, Tyler Croft. Hot name tight end. Can't say I know where he came from, but hot name tight end uh, joining that team. Uh, so... This is one thing I heard out of their camp. Uh, I heard Luke Musgrave is like emerging. That's the Packers. This oh, is oh, the shit, Dolphins. Shit. Oh, shit, 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 shit. Wait, 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 wait. Tyler Kraft is the Packers tight end. Tyler Croft is the Dolphins tight end. Clo- you see, that's why I got close. Confused. It's close. It's that's close. That's why I got confused. Okay. It's close. Okay, okay. Somebody sniped Tyler Kraft from me in the fantasy league. I'm not I don't have any takeaway to make there. If it comes to the Dolphins, I think the one... Uh, I know this uh, is surprising keeps and cuts, but if we're going to talk increase, decrease playing time, the one thing that should get increased playing time is vaping on the sideline. Cause when, <laughs> when he was vaping on the sideline, like they were kind of moving on off. They were, they were, they were, were, were going to win but, that like, game. It, it'll give him a clear mind, give him just a clear angle, like in Buffalo, especially like you could really pull it off. Like I, I understand what he was going for. It was really fucking smart. Like, Really smart. I wonder if that was a bet too. Do you think? Do you think one of his friends bet him? Well, he he said in quotations that it was not a vape. It was like a pen. It was a vape. Wait, so he was was getting faded? No, 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 no. like like a like a like a pen, like a pen, like a writing pen. uh, I thought he was. That'd be so funny. Just getting just dumb high on the sidelines for the fucking AFC wildcard game. They were doing that well too. Well, I mean, shit. My Skyler God. Thompson was your starting quarterback. We get really shit. creative. You might have to. You might have. We get to. really creative when that happens. You're like, fuck. All right, they got to pull out the big guns. But um, but yeah, Dolphins. Okay. Got, they got some interesting moves. They can make. Giants keeps and cuts. It's the second and final one for the week. Cuts Saquon Bart. No. <laughs> Cut Daniel Jones. <laughs> Uh, honorable mention structure daniel <laughs> honorable mention cut daniel jones but uh okay keep darnay holmes to sean bauer and cole beasley and cut gary brightwell jameson crowder yes he is still in the league shane lemieux aaron robinson and sterling shepherd 
wow, damn, Sterling Shepard's not going to have people happy, but holy shit. I, He's still geez, in the league. The still fuck? in the league. Still in the league. Damn, yeah, I mean, hey, you learn something new every day. People no, look, look, that, I like, know. Last year, uh, I'm pretty sure um, opening day roster, uh, who was the, the famous bum from Detroit? Uh, on the Giants. I'm forgetting his name already. Oh, Kenny Galladay. Yeah, Galladay. Uh, Still unsigned. Yeah, yeah, but I think he did start the season on the Giants last year. Yeah, he was wide receiver one to start the season. Yeah, wide receiver one. Uh, Yeah, yeah, I saw that turned out, but yeah, yeah, I think wide receiver one ended up being maybe Daniel Bellinger down the stretch, uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, and it was uh, Isaiah Hodgins. Mm. Or when Wandell Robinson. Go big blue. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, but yeah, no, I know, I know Sterling Shepard's gonna, gonna bother some people. It's gonna tickle, tickle some, some people the wrong way, uh, but just been injured. It's now kind of crowded. Everybody's on the, I'm not gonna say anybody's exceptionally great at the wide receiver room on that team. Cause they're not, they're all average. And because they're all average, including Sterling Shepard at this point in his career, he's about to be 30. There's no reason to keep him with a big salary compared to other people and injury concerns going to be competing. Like it just doesn't make sense. You're starting fresh. You might as well. He's not, he's not the coach's guy. He's not the GM's guy. He's been there for too long. He has, he was not drafted by that. The current staff was not signed by the current staff. He's there. And I know he got a one year deal, I believe, but it can be nullified by cutting him. So it can be a cap casualty. Just injury, age, doesn't make sense to keep. I mean, it's fair enough, though. You know, uh, Giants, I guess, I get, or, because, I mean, it's not like I know much shit about these, like, lower tier guys. Sterling Shepard, I mean, it, it was a wonder. I mean, we'll always have that picture of him and Odell and the rest of the boys and Tim's on that boat in Miami. We'll <laughs> always have that. Don't worry, we still uh, got one. There's still one on the Darius Slayton would still be on the team. Still one guy. Damn, left. Slayton was on that team. And until they cut him, uh, they will not win anything. Yeah, I mean, they gotta completely rid themselves of that curse. Uh, I do, I mean, still one of my favorite quotes just from that era is when Odell said the Gi- when talking about going to the Cleveland Browns, he said the Giants sent me here to die. <laughs> <laughs> literally odell was like cleveland's the worst place on earth they sent me here on purpose because they knew i'd hate it they sent me here to die like that's just so at least he got dramatic. some time with jarvis he got some time with jarvis at least yeah, there's that the lsu boys could you know have some fun together back then for that but, but yeah, I mean, with that i think i think honestly, so much surprise odell didn't even really toy with the idea of going to the saints or did he i don't really know I think he might have, but I mean, he had towards ACL, like they nobody was signing him. Yeah, except the Saints got except enough. The Ravens, who have like the worst med staff room other than the Chargers in the NFL. Saints, Saints have enough issues as is with just Michael Thomas. They don't need anything else. Yeah, you don't want to pick up another liability like that shit. So hey, I don't blame them. I don't blame them. But now with that thing is so much for watching, listening, raise five stars. You can find us on Spotify, TikTok, YouTube, fuck X. And Instagram at Waterboy Pod. It's Twitter. I mean, if you say Twitter one more time, like he's going to come after us. Elon, he's going to send his (sighs) nanobot army to come after us and take us out. Yeah. Don't want to, don't want to, the robots ever. Don't want to activate the unnamed interns. Serious. Don't want to activate the unnamed interns doomsday protocols. Um, You can find us on, you can find me and Grant on Twitter at Everett Takes and at Waterboy Grant. Make sure to subscribe, follow, favorite, like every content, share with your fan, friends, family, uh, whoever else, your grandma, okay? Uh, and we'll see you guys all in the next episode. Waterboy's out.